Hi there YouTube, back again with another installment of Militaria, Militaria, however you say that word. Anyway, this is a special treat from the Colonel to let us take a peek at it, and if you saw that it's in his regimental museum, you'll know who I'm talking about, as well as who he is, he already knows that, but it was a special treat for him to show it with us today and after this it'll probably go back to where it come for another 20 years and not to be seen again by human eyes. So this is a very special um, presentation and it's only due to him. This is not one of my pieces that's for sure. I wish I did have something like this but maybe someday. Anyway I wanted to show you this because there are a lot of reproductions and fakes and people passing things off as this or that so I just figured I'd show you a real uh, Reichsarbeinstein stagger and sheath to show you kind of what um, can be expected on a real one. And if some of these features are missing from the one you're looking at, then it's probably not a real one. And this was authenticated through his regimental historian when they had one. And uh, rest in peace to him. He was a great man. So moving on from that, more somber note. I wanted to get you in and take a really close look at some of the um, engraving here on the fittings because you can see they're very finely done. There's no errors. You know, those lines are perfectly spaced. There was definitely care taken in, you know, setting the V, putting in the, the chaffs of wheat. Same thing up here, very well spaced. Now it's it doesn't go across. They don't line up. They don't meet up. Which is interesting. It's like they were supposed to, but the machine just had a gap in it type of thing. The throat and the hanger for you. And it's on both sides. So the pattern is the same, exactly the same on both sides. The screws. Now this throat is marked with, I guess they were marked with the unit and the serial number. But when I was looking through the RAD stations, I couldn't find that prefix anywhere. Now the other ones that I saw online had an M, an A umlaut, and I couldn't find that prefix either. So maybe that has some other meaning that I'm not, I couldn't research in the short time it was that I had before I had to shoot and return this fine piece of edged weaponry, bring back, war bring back. So going along here, you'll notice that it's supposed to have that same marking on one, one side or the other of this, and it does never appear to have had one. So maybe it's a marriage, and that's possible considering where, you know, the history of these are. And now this didn't happen with this one, but I heard that they use these in South America to cut sugar cane. And so that just shows you what kind of durability that they could expect. These were made for, you know, hot, hacking down tree limbs and, and, you know, cutting trails and the things that kind of the RAD was known for doing, making roads, etc. So you can see here the little detail of the, the back of the spine of the blade, the fairly narrow uh, fuller that doesn't extend to the, you know, doesn't extend anywhere near the end of the cleaver section kind of some of the it almost kind of looks raw but it gives you that kind of old Roman throwback feel to the, the cross guard there some pretty nice stag handles with some deep, some fairly deep uh, texture not too deep and there's no marking at the end of the palm or on I looked really closely all over this thing for a unit marking but I couldn't find one but it does have markings on it, of course. Now the Arbeit Adel is pretty well removed, and that's pretty common for bring back stuff. A lot of the times it was, you know, given to a grandson or a son to play with, and they didn't take the best care of it. <clears throat> Not that that happened with this particular one, but so here you can see the Reichs Arbeinsteins. Uh, RLD combination triangle logo there with the the patent protected in German the abbreviation 
the Carl Yule Krebs logo. Solingen. But what's interesting is underneath the logo there, it's really hard to focus on. There's a little crud there too. It says 1938. Now, you jump to go to a conclusion and say, well, 1938, that sounds like a date. But the other ones that I saw, and this was around, uh, among other makers as well, um, there were a lot of numbers like 983, 562. So clearly that's not a date. Those aren't date numbers. The fact that this happens to be one of in the date range maybe just adds to confusion rather than an actual date of assignment of maker or issue or any of that. So, if you've enjoyed this short look, I'm going to probably include some of the details as far as lengths and widths and weight of everything, the scabbard and the blade, just so if you are going to buy one of these, you have some critical dimensions and specifications to work off of because there are a bunch of fakes and if you're interested in the history of these uh, for sure check out some of the other videos and documentation online because I'm by no means an expert but I really wanted to share with you uh, an authentic piece of history both from the German aspect from when it was made and from the American aspect from when it was picked up and brought home. So thanks to the veterans of all sides for serving their countries. You know, the outcomes are the outcomes, but can't really fault someone for obeying the call and, you know, serving their people. So of course the victors to the victors go the spoils and that's how this ended up here and is still in existence because if it would have stayed where it was it would have been destroyed so thanks for watching and if you have any questions I probably won't be able to answer them because this is probably the last time that this will see daylight for 20 years or so like I said so but I can maybe find out probably not but maybe so go ahead and put them in the comments down below and if you like this sort of thing be sure to check out my other videos so thanks for watching see you next time Okay, so as promised, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot these measurements because there's some explanation kind of required for them. So anywhere I have fractions, that's something that I used a uh, ruler on, so it's not real precise. None of these I would take with a grain of salt because between the different manufacturers there can be variations as well as different parts of the production run. This example being ground might have some differences. So take it with a grain of salt, but some of you know they were made to a specification and you can tell just by working over this thing with a micrometer that clearly that they were made to a spec this is in inches so don't get don't get all excited about making well i guess you could make a little one in millimeters and make a little tiny one but this is the dimension of the fuller here five and a half nine and nine sixteenths from the edge of the guard to the tip of the blade. So like I said, just take these as kind of, because I mean, you can't really get good measurements off of here anyway. But some of these are gonna be really hard to uh, duplicate like this, this drop down. Now this 1.205 is actually from this narrowest point. So the narrowest point from the cutout to this. And I've noticed what that's for after looking at it for a little while is that that bump down is so that this part of the kind of machete point will fit in the scabbard and hold it straight. It's kind of a you know well thought out thing. I didn't really think you know I had to think about it to figure it out. Anyway, so then this is the the distance here, and then all you know these distances here for the fat part of the grip is here. Then the narrow part, this is this dimension here. Like I said, I didn't want to put a bunch of the different, I didn't want to completely spell it out because if somebody was going to try to fake one of these, uh, I didn't want to give every possible dimension. So I'm just showing the general, you know, if you were going to buy one, this is 
probably a good guide to have, you know, if you had the time to actually look it over and throw a micrometer or a measuring tape or something on it real quick. That's not always possible, of course. But so this 194 is this dimension here. So and then the weights for the knife only it was one pound 5.6 ounces which was 611 grams the knife plus the sheath was two pounds 3.5 ounces 1006 grams the sheath only was 14 ounces 396 grams of course that doesn't add up exactly but yeah, I guess it does anyway so those are the weights and that'd be another thing It'd be really hard to match those exactly. Once again, there's maybe a gram or two difference because of the excessive grinding. So, but it would be within a range, a very close range. So, didn't want to really leave you hanging there, and I didn't want to put it in the comments and have it really be not as good and then not explain why it's not every dimension. Because, you know, we there's enough fakes out there, and the last thing I want to do is support better fakes so that's why it's kind of a general thing and that's that should be good enough to get you through you know if, if any one of these dimensions is off by too much you know that it's something's not right at least for this manufacturer as I said the other ones could be slightly different as far as the length of the fuller and everything so this is a Krebs and I think that should be pretty good as far as working around. So, a note to myself, if I'm ever looking for one, here you go, buddy. This is the way you find out if it's a real one or a fake one fairly quickly. With all the other information that we found through the markings and everything else. And so, once again, I'd like to thank the Colonel for letting us take a quick look at this. and. I will be sure to pass on any more information that I get about this and any other items that I might be able to look at real quick. And I'll just clean this up and put it back where it, from whence it came. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.